Hello, hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, James here as ever, for today's ACCA Financial Management video, all about the External Examiner's Report, going through the Section A notes to help you for your CBE examination. If this is the first video you've ever clicked on of mine, hello, my name's James, I'm an ACCA qualified member and tutor from the UK, and on my channel I help our ACCA students around the world pass their examinations for free. So, if that's of interest to you, be sure to subscribe and hit that button below because all my videos are dedicated to my lovely subscribers. So, as you can see above me, Vidi, thank you so much for the comment, my friend. And this is going to be based on your actual revision plan because they've got so many good notes in this ex external examiner's report that I know <laughs> from being a past ACCA student, you go, oh, is there much worth in actually reading these? Trust me, stay to the end of this video because it walks and talks you through some examples, insights for the actual exam. So if you if you are literally just starting out on FM or you're watching this the day before the exam, you've got it tomorrow, this is definitely going to help. As always as well, please feel free to give the video a massive like and thumbs up so that more ACCA students can see these videos. I appreciate all the support for the channel so much. As you can see, it's a lovely sunny day here I'm in my mum's kitchen. So I hope you enjoy the video. But let's get stuck into it straight away. So make sure you've got pen and paper at the ready because at the end of this video, you'll be smiling as much as that lady right there. Now for section A, as you can see on the screen, um, you're going to have 15 OTQ questions on there, objective test questions or multiple choice, and that is based on 30 marks of your exam. If you haven't already, get it noted down in your notes from this video that get practicing on the practice platform because it is just trial and error, getting used to all of the topic areas. That is going to be paramount for you passing this exam. Now, in the FM exam, this is my opinion, take it as you must, section A is actually the easiest section out of the three. Now, if you're following the general rule of 1.8 minutes per mark because you've got 180 minutes in the exam for 100 marks, you should allocate 54 minutes to section A as a maximum. Now, I know students that allocate 45 minutes to section A, 40, even less, uh, depending on the sort of questions that they get. But it's up to you. I would maybe pinch some time from section A and reallocate it to B and C. If you haven't watched the videos on, on sections B and C on my channel, get it down in the notes as well, because it's the same document that's reviewed through with some questions on there. Another key thing to note down, if you haven't had a look through the syllabus yet, anything can be tested in section A. And if you need the up-to-date text or you just want some help, click the link in the description of this video. It's got all the up-to-date text on there from credible resources that I'd be using to help me pass the exam. Also, as we go through the video, I'm not just going to read off the screen, but everything underlined are key points on here that you can have a little read through um, that I picked up on from the external examiner. Everything from giving future candidates an indication of types of questions asked, the difficulty, the guidance, and this all links into your exam technique that you need to be aware of and identifying the different areas of the syllabus. Now in this video, for the section A questions and examples we're going to go through, as you can see on the screen we've got return on capital employed, money market instruments, working capital strategy, and the cost of equity. So again, it's just four more questions to have in your arsenal going into this exam that we're actually going to walk and talk through now. So the first example that we looked at was return on capital employed, investment appraisal method, a massive topic area in your exam. And this is a technique they always say for section A as to which of the following statements is correct. And it goes without saying, you've got to read the question effectively because there's usually one answer which you go, hang on a second, this can't be right on there. So you've just got to narrow it down. So as you can see, I've already marked on there what the correct answer is, so for you to get it down. But we've got return on capital employed leads to a better investment decisions since it uses uh, accounting profit rather than uh, estimated cash flows. We've then got for part B, investment projects with a return on capital employed greater than the weighted average cost of capital should be accepted. Investment projects with a return on capital employed less than the current return on capital employed of an organisation should be rejected. And then finally, the correct answer for the following statements about return on capital employed as an investment appraisal method. Return on capital employed takes into account all years of operation uh, of an investment project, which it does. It looks at you know the initial outlay all the way to the final year on there. 
So for part A, I've got the little note on there, uses cash flow uh, in investment appraisal. So return on capital employee uh, to better, uh, leads to better investment decisions as it uses accounting profit rather than uh, estimated cash flows. That was the one you go, well, no, it doesn't use accounting profits. It uses cash flows. So that is incorrect and it can't be the correct answer. For B and C, um, you've got per pieces down here. I'll just put it on the screen so you can see it. So return on capital employed does take into account all years of the operation, which links into part D. But many candidates instead selected either options B or C, with the key thing here being investment decisions should be made on the basis of discounted cash flows. So that's taking into account the time value of money. And the key thing to note down there is the PV factor tables that you'll be given in your exam. Uh, there is no relationship between the return on capital employed and the weighted average cost of capital. That is all to the weighted average cost of capital is all about debt and equity. Return on capital employed is all about the bottom line profit that we've made from the investment going in. There is no correlation between the two. Hence why, as you can see on the answers up there, B and C can't be correct because investment projects with return on capital employed greater than the weighted average cost of capital should be accepted. Well, as we know now, there is no correlation between the two. And then for part C, investment projects with a return on capital employed less than the current return on capital employed of an organisation should be rejected on there. Well, yes, that, that, that is correct on it uh, as such, but it's a case of, well, the final one there for return on capital employed, taking into account all of the years of the operation, is much more of a credible answer for you on there. But it just made a basic statement with return on capital employed less than the current return on capital employed of an organisation should be rejected. Well, what if that's based on you've got a new investment coming in or we've had a, a cash injection or more equity? That is not going to be comparable, is it? So there are a lot more factors that need to be considered for, for option C. So hence it can't be correct. There are too many variables to take into account. So that takes us through the return on capital employed example. Then you've got number two on here. And again, feel free to have a go at these beforehand. I'll put the link to this document in the description of the video below. Probably should have said that at the start. But example two, notice as well as I'm going through uh, the question, everything underlined are the key facts, key figures that you need to be picking up on in your exam. So a large listed company, so complex, multinational, is to issue a 90-day commercial paper. So that is a uh, short-term um, form of finance with a nominal value of £10 million on there. So that's the value in 90 days is going to be £10 million. Each paper will have a nominal value of 100000 on there. The annual required rate of return is 4%, assuming a 365-day year, which, uh, sorry, what will be the issue price of each paper on there? So we've got the nominal amount, we've got the period, uh, and we've also got the amount, the value in 90 days. So let me take you down to the workings on here, which again, if you want to take a screenshot of it, feel free to. I'll get the answer on there for you as well. So the correct answer we had was $99,023, but how did we get to it? So you need to write down and learn this formula. So there are some formulas that are given to you within the examination and some are not. And this is where we had 90 days uh, for the issue over a 365 day period. So hence, this is where we actually had to pro rata it on here. And um, no, nothing against ACCA, but there is a small mistake if you want to, you can see where my mouse is. You know how it said they want a return of 4%? Well, the answer, the, the, uh, the, the, the <laughs> I'm stuttering now because I, I dare not say it in case anyone watches this, but they've got a return down there of 40%. So it should be 0 0.04 um, on there. If you put in 0 0.04 with the calculation, it'll get it to um, on there. So we've got the issue price is equal to $99,023 as at today, because in 90 days time, basically what this formula is saying is that it's going to be worth 100,000. So the value of that as at today is 99,023. So it's one of those formulas that you need to write down on there just to be crystal clear. And just so that you don't make any mistakes on this money market question, uh, multiplying doesn't discount the amount on here. So many candidates, instead of deducting the pro rata rate of return um, from one and multiplied this by the nominal value. So they made some mistakes as they went through and that's how they actually got uh, the different figure. So the difference here, if I put the mouse on it, the correct way to do it is 
adding the pro rata, so with the plus that you can see on there, whereas lots of students use the minus on there, which actually isn't the right way to do it for you. So it's only a small little adjustment for you. It's one of those formulas that you have to know for your exam. So make sure you get it jotted down and you understand the variables for it. Example three now, and this is where we actually have a matching concept. So again, classic exam style question where you you know click on the CBE platform going across, where match the characteristic below with the appropriate appropriate working capital strategy. So working capital for your notes is all about the cash flow that comes in and out of the business, managing that on a day to day basis to pay our short term liabilities. And on here, just my little notes on the side. First of all, read very carefully because they are designed to confuse you and then consider the different variables that you've got accordingly. So you've got relatively high level of current assets, relatively low level of current assets, relatively large amount of short term finance relatively small amounts of short-term finance. And then this is either going to be linked or matched to a conservative investment strategy, aggressive investment strategy, aggressive financing strategy, or conservative finance strategy on there. So my notes when I went through this um, from a student's point of view, think about the risk and return. Those are two key words that you need to be aware of for your financial management exam, the risk and return trade-off of your selections here. So as you can see on here, notice how we've got the conservative investment strategy, relatively high of current assets, aggressive, relatively low, aggressive financing, large amounts of, um, of short term finance and uh, conservative financing strategy, uh, small amounts of short term finance. So let me just come down to the notes on here uh, before we get onto it so that you can take it down. So look what the external examiner wrote down for us, that many candidates appear to be confused between working capital investment strategy and financing strategy. So growth and generating economic value and benefit is a great sort of way of putting that in a financial management sort of way. Um, but working capital, as we said, is all about the cash flows in and out of the organization. Whereas the financing is, are we actually buying non-current assets? Um, to actually generate economic growth, what are we? At? How are we actually financing that going forward? Are we going to generate uh, more equity? Are we going to finance it through more debt on there? And the aggressive and conservative approaches. So notice on here how you got financing, financing. They re they relate to short term finance on there. So linking into debt and equity. Whereas the investment strategy. So where are we putting our money to generate that economic value and benefit? all related to the current assets on there. But again, I'll let you read it through in your own time. Just seeing, you'll read it through, but conservative, uh, just to be crystal clear, is all about having a, a rational approach, understanding what's going on in the situation, and very pragmatic, just in case it's one of those words that uh, some students maybe get a bit confused on. Now, example four on here. Uh, a company has announced that it will pay an annual dividend equal to 55% of earnings. Its earnings per share is 80 cents and it has 10 million shares in issue. The return on equity is 20% and the current cumulative dividend share price is $4.60. What is the cost of, uh, cost of equity? Now, in these sort of um, questions that you get lots of different variables, percentages and, and uh, amounts, just go through it line by line with your workings on here. Because as you can see on the screen, the answer was 20.5%, but you'll see it. As we read it through, the annual dividend is equal to 55% of earnings. The earnings per share is 80 cents on there. So the first bit they've actually done is dividend to be paid. 55% multiplied by 80 cents on there. Then the current earnings that they say, right, it earns 80, 80 cents on there per share, and they've got 10 million shares. Next working, 10 million shares multiplied by the 80 cents. So it's just a bit of an exam technique for section eight. If you ever get a bit stuck on it, on these type of questions, you're going, I'm really not sure, James. Just work it through line by line. You'll be fine on there. Then you've got the retention ratio, uh, how much of the profits are going to be retained. And again, if anyone wants to take a screenshot of the actual um, uh, screen on there, you're more than welcome to. Now, this is the key formula. This is where we use the WAC formula after getting the dividend growth rate up to 9%, so taking the retention ratio that we worked out above, multiplied by uh, the actual return on equity that we were given in the question up there, 
And this is where we get the final one on here, where if you want to get it down, where we use the uh, weighted average cost of capital formula uh, to actually get uh, the cost of equity that we're looking for on here. So cost of equity, that was one of the clues that you say, well, I haven't seen cost of equity before. It's actually in the weight and average cost of capital formula. And that is the breakdown of the dividend played multiplied by one plus the growth rate on there for the top part, divided by the cumulative share price minus the dividend paid plus the dividend paid for you gives us our 20.5%. So many candidates did not adjust the cumulative dividend share price. It's just so that you're aware that we make sure we get the right retention ratio as well on there. So again, you'll start to see these things come up, but notice how we just worked it through. We saw that we were working at the cost of equity, and then we had to find out those facts and the figures from the information that was provided. Finally on here, we've got a nice little conclusion, and I actually highlighted quite a lot on here, so we're just going to go through the bits on red. So read this if you have failed FM before. Don't make silly mistakes, read the requirements, and be prepared for the exam pressure. This is a really tough exam as you go through it. Um, there is no partial marking, as you can see on there, reading the question carefully. Um, if a question asks for a candidate to select two correct statements, then marks can only be awarded for the two statements that have been selected. So some students will think, I know one's right, but I don't want to put another one down. Well, you don't get any marks for that. You need to give two. A candidate who selects three statements will also receive no marks. Um, and just to be clear, so an answer which only selects one statement will be awarded no marks. So if it says select two, you've got to select two on there just to write down for your exam technique. Now, finally, on here, before the sunlight blinds me, uh, in addition, when answering a number entry question, and this is where the CBE platform exam technique will come into it, you've got to answer it in the correct format. So if it says millions or thousands, if it is not in the correct format, um, then, uh, and using the, the correct um, uh, commas on there, you've seen thousands, you've seen millions, it will be registered as incorrect. So just get used to the CBE platform and that is where you will see the benefit from it. Uh, if there is no specified format, um, they will allow for any correct answer. So just check those units, check those metrics, um, have a look back at the requirement, but it, it just boils back down to read the requirement carefully because there are clues in there to help you out with your section A of your financial management examination, which then would nicely lead us on to the section B on there. But I hope that's helped as we've gone through all the, uh, you know, few little examples from section A. We've walked and talked it through and you can now see what the external examiner is telling you how to pass this examination. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have and you're watching still at this point, I'd really appreciate it. Give it a massive like below as ever. Thank you so much for the support to the channel. Be sure to leave any comments or requests for videos that you'd like, just like Viddy. And of course, as ever, most importantly, let us know how you get on in your financial management exam because these little tips and tricks in the videos we've got on the channel could be the difference in you getting the 50 plus and getting you through. So if you want all the access to the channel, just subscribe below and I'd love to hear how you get on. But before I get blinded even more, best of luck with your financial management exam. Let me know how you get on and uh, hopefully it is the difference in getting you that 50 plus. Well, on that bombshell, we'll see you next time. Cheers.